Biden has big plans already selling his $4 trillion spending package. But this is many people worried. How are you going to pay for $4 trillion? Don't worry, says Joe Biden. He's going to tax the rich, raising capital gains taxes to unprecedented levels because these rich people aren't paying their fair share. Now, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Recently, a story went viral about the Daily Wire crew saying that the poor actually don't pay their fair share. And you've got the left and the right arguing over who needs to pay more taxes. But I think ultimately, it's not as relevant, though we do have at least one billionaire saying Joe Biden raising taxes is going to destroy the market. We're starting to witness hyperinflation. OK, maybe not hyperinflation. I don't know where you add the word hyper to the word inflation. But how about lumber costs going up 250 percent? How about all household goods prices skyrocketing, gasoline skyrocketing, a shortage of computer chips, a shortage of used cars, rental car prices skyrocketing, hotel prices skyrocketing. Prices across the board are going up and we were warned and we warned people about this. Last year, they were spending money like crazy, printing money like crazy, borrowing it like crazy. COVID, they said we needed a relief package. But surely you understand how inflation works. Unfortunately, for the responsible working individuals of this country, many on the left were advocating for insane policies they don't understand. Just deficit spend, they say. But eventually the bill comes due. The problem with the COVID relief packages is that the money was not going to the American people. And what I was saying the whole time was maybe if they want to print six trillion dollars, they just divide it up among all Americans. They did not. They gave a lot to big box stores and big business and corporate bailouts, loan forgiveness. And to make matters worse, the lockdown made sure that small businesses suffered and couldn't operate while Walmart and Target and Amazon raked in billions. And now the net worth of these companies is skyrocketing and the billionaires who run them. And now it is the working class who will suffer. It is the poor who will suffer because the prices will skyrocket. And who's going to pay for all of that borrowed and printed money? That's right. It's you. So now, as Joe Biden steps up saying he's going to spend more, baby, guess who has to foot the bill? You. It's a dirty game they play. Now, Fox Business says Biden's spending spree to unleash inflation. Big money managers worry. You combine this with a story from Market Watch. Quote, this is not going to end well. Billionaire Leon Cooperman says stock market will be lower a year from now. So not only are you going to be paying for the money they printed and gave to corporations, your 401k will fall into the gutter. And you know who won't care? The millionaires and the billionaires. So you can thank politicians of both parties for all of this. But right now, as Democrats control the system, they're the ones who we're going to be criticizing. They're the ones at fault. But don't forget, Donald Trump was president while a lot of this spending was happening. Donald Trump wanted to give everyone $2,000 checks. And maybe that would have made sense because we wanted the relief package to go to the American people, not to corporate bailouts. But it went to corporate bailouts. Let's read this story and maybe read through these stories. I'll show you what's going on. Maybe this can help you figure out what's happening so you can protect yourself. Before we do, Head over to TimCast.com, click that big old members only button, sign up, and you will get access to the members area where we have a whole bunch of exclusive members only segments with our guests from the TimCast IRL podcast. Last night, we had Drew Hernandez talking about white farmers suing over a Democrat policy banning white people from loan forgiveness. Hey, how about that? Not only are they spending money they don't have, they're also racist. If you want to watch that segment, go to TimCast.com, become a member, but don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And first, the story we're going to read before we get into the really scary stuff about hyperinflation. I got a bunch of stories showing you where the cost of goods are on the rise to a very horrifying degree. People are warning the end of the year is going to be bad. I don't know for sure. I'm not an economist. But first, let's read about Biden's spending spree from Fox Business. They say, Big money, big money managers worry Biden's ambitious spending plans could derail the momentum seen in markets and the economy, according to a new Bank of America survey. Risks are now associated with boom, not recession. 
wrote Michael Hartnett, chief investment strategist at Bank of America, noting that COVID-19 was named a global pandemic on March 11th of last year. U.S. equity markets climbed to record highs in April, with the S&P 500 extending its rally off the March 2020 lows to 84%, while the rollout of multiple COVID-19 vaccines has bolstered the reopening of the economy. The economy is expected to have the second quarter gro- to have in the second quarter grown 4.9% quarter over quarter, the fastest since the third quarter of 2020. The pickup in economic activity, which has occurred following an unprecedented amount of fiscal and monetary stimulus, has big money investors worried about the impact of those policies. A net 74% of respondents to Bank of America's Global Fund Manager survey said a bond market taper tantrum, 32%, inflation, 27%, or higher taxes pose the biggest tail risk to markets. The Charlotte, North Carolina-based lender surveyed 117 participants with $553 billion in assets under management between April 6th and the 12th. Biden is currently backing a $2.3 trillion infrastructure bill and is also reportedly working on a $1 trillion package that centers on health care and education. He plans to at least partially pay for the latter two plans by implementing a series of tax hikes. Now, here's what, here's, here's what you need to understand. The economy may be doing well. It may be growing. But what's happening is we did nothing all of last year. People were, were getting money from the government, from stimulus. Now the economy is set to restart and people are going to need a lot of money. But we're also in a lot of debt. A lot of money was printed. We're going to see inflation. We are going to see a stagnant market. It's interesting that they say over at Fox Business that the economy will do well, but the market, according to one billionaire, will be lower a year from now. Yes, we stopped working last year, so it's no surprise the the economy will show signs of growth. We dropped down massively and are trying to recover back to where we were or at least to get back on track. So the numbers will look pretty good, but the market will be worse off for it. Market Watch says that self-described fully invested invested bear, Leon Cooperman, who told CNBC on Friday that given a coming rise in taxes, inflation and a reasonably richly appraised market, he has an eye on the exit. Cooperman, the chair of the Omega family office, added that nobody myself included, knows when this is going to end. We just watch the things that would normally indicate an end. Stocks were weaker Friday on track for a mixed weekly performance despite a hectic week of corporate results that featured blowout results for some of the world's largest tech-related companies. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was down more than 200 points, dragging the blue chip gauge lower for the week. The S&P 500 was down 0.7 for the session, while the Nasdaq was down 0.5. Cooperman warned that the pace of market gains since bottoming out in March 2020 following the pandemic induced bear market plunge can't continue indefinitely. Quote, I think we should recognize we are pulling demand forward and that the longer term outlook is not particularly favorable. In my view, he said, Cooperman said he expects Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, who has described a recent pickup in the price pressures as transitory will ultimately be surprised by inflation, forcing the central bank to signal action before the end of 2022. Do you know what inflation means for you? Summers says inflation indicators flashing red alarm. Let me break down what inflation means for you. First, starting with this, gas prices are skyrocketing and are expected to rise even higher this summer. From toilet paper to diapers, here's a slew of household staples that are about to get more expensive. Used car prices skyrocket due to global chip shortage. Rental car prices skyrocket as Hawaii sees spike in tourists, some as high as $1,000 per day. Now, of course, that's Hawaii. But let's get more serious. Lumber prices skyrocket nearly 250% from April 29th. Impacts suppliers and buyers. Soaring steel prices eat into company profits, drive up building costs, and possibly what consumers pay. Are you paying attention to what all of this means? Let's say you have $100 saved in the bank. That $100 can buy you 100 widgets, widgets just being a nebulous item of, of you know, consumer need. Inflation hits. Now, you worked hard for that $100. 
But the widgets now cost two bucks. You can only buy half as many. Money doesn't necessarily mean much. There was a story in the news just in the past week or so where some guy found 50 grand, I'm rounding up, in a, in a, in a, in a safe box in the floorboards of his family home. They hired a treasure hunter to go through the house. Well, apparently like 50 or 60 years ago, his grandfather took this cash, put it in a box, put it in the floorboards. They knew it was there, but not exactly where in the house. So they had someone come and find it. They're all excited. $50,000. Woohoo. You know, it's funny though. You know what the buying power of that $50,000 was when their grandpa stored it? It's the equivalent of, I think like it was like a half a million dollars or $400,000 because of inflation. You can't save. So all of the hard work you did last year struggling through COVID is now that the value of that labor is being slashed as the price of goods skyrockets. The Hill reports. Summer says inflation indicators flashing red alarm. Former Treasury Secretary Larry Summer said Wednesday that inflation indicators were flashing red alarm, renewing a critique of President Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill, which was signed into law last month. Quote, we were providing demand well in excess over the next couple of years of any plausible estimate of the economy's potential to produce. And that meant substantial price increases. The prominent Democratic policy advisor said at a Council on Foreign Relations forum, All the signs are for inflation starting to break out, he said, pointing to recent upticks in the cost of housing, used cars and commodities, as well as labor shortages. Businesses reporting price increases and surveys of purchasing managers. Summers qualified his remarks by noting that economists disagree about some fundamental issues and said there was a one in three chance that inflation doesn't take hold in a significant way that leads to bad outcomes. Look, economists don't know what drives this stuff. They're not sure. Let me give you a scary hypothetical. First, not an economist. Throughout the past year, people racked up massive debt. The government said, don't worry, we'll give you a stimulus, some cash, and we'll put a moratorium on uh, evictions and mortgages. Okay. So people were still in debt. The, the, The things they owed their landlords were still racking up. You didn't have to pay your landlord. You couldn't get evicted. But you still owe them that thousand bucks a month or two thousand bucks a month, depending on where you live. At the end of the year, you now owe what? Ten grand? Because all this starts around February or March. So you own maybe you owe maybe eight thousand, ten thousand dollars. You need to pay it back. So you go look for work now that things are starting to open back up. And you tell these guys, look, man, I'm in massive debt from last year. I need to get paid something substantive. They say, I can't afford to pay anything more than ten bucks an hour. Ten bucks an hour ain't enough. Okay, 15 bucks an hour, fine. I need the workers. We need to get back to work. Some places won't even be reopening. Consider that when it comes to the economy, all the businesses that are permanently destroyed. Now you're going to have people desperately in need of work, unable to pay their debt, needing more money, and the business then has to pay what they don't have. So they either can't hire the person or they got to pay money they don't have. So they got to jack up all the prices. All of a sudden, everything becomes substantially more expensive. Hyperinflation is a real possibility. And that means the money you've saved in U.S. dollars might become worth nothing. Maybe two years ago, you saved money. I'll tell you what's really funny. I saved money. I've saved a lot of money from when I worked for, for Disney. And it's really funny because I just have it sitting in the bank. And that money's becoming worth less every single day. It's incredible how this works. The system is being stressed beyond all recognition. Let me give you two examples of of what you need to understand. When they say hyperinflation is coming and people who are smart say, I'm not going to sit on these U.S. dollars, what do they do? Well, they start looking for commodities. They start looking for things they can diversify into. Well, the obvious would be like gold and silver. But gold and silver kind of not really skyrocket all that much because there's something easier to get, something you can secure yourself. How about Bitcoin? How about the price of Bitcoin over the past year? In September, or right, let's do this. In November, on November 9th, one Bitcoin was $15,317.60. Today, one Bitcoin is $56,000. I'm sorry, $56,710.50. Why skyrocket so much? 
Surely there are people who want to invest in something like Bitcoin because it's the future. But perhaps it's because the smart people, the people with money who didn't want to lose it, recognized you can't just have politicians pumping money into the system and not have a crisis on your hands. The market, some are predicting, will take a hit. It's going to drop dramatically. The 401ks of regular Americans, the retirement accounts will suffer and the rich people will jump into cryptocurrencies because it ain't just Bitcoin. It's also Ethereum. Take a look at the price of Ethereum back on November, November 9th, the same time, $444.44. Today, one Ethereum is $2,767.07. Imagine if you were one of these wealthy individuals who saw the signs and understood the market. Many of them bought massive amounts of Bitcoin, and now the prices are skyrocketing. There's a lot of reasons why the prices are going up. I don't know exactly if, if, if it's all related to fears of inflation, but I believe it's greatly related to fears of inflation. People are scared about political instability. Joe Biden can barely muster any ratings in his speech. His, his polling is, is down relative to Donald Trump's polling in his first speech. There's very little confidence in the system. And because of the mass spending, now seeing more Biden's $4 trillion spending package, people are scared. Think about it this way. The price of lumber. Let me show you the story. The price of lumber is up 250%. Okay. Imagine you had $15 in November and you put that into Bitcoin because you can. And now you have about $57. Okay. The price of lumber wouldn't have impacted you because you would have had something like Bitcoin. I'm not giving you advice or telling you what to buy. I'm just saying, hypothetically, someone who's put all of their money into Bitcoin in November and then takes it all out today will not see a loss of their value and wealth when it comes to buying lumber. The average person not paying attention will. This is where things get interesting. You know who's going to suffer the most? It's going to be the Democratic base, because these are the people who likely are not paying attention to what's going on in the world or politics. Fox 8 reports, lumber prices are up about 250 percent since April 2020, according to the National Association of Home Builders. Quote, we're not getting lumber in a timely manner because of COVID and the mills can't keep up with the orders coming in. I haven't seen anything like this. Hatton said part of the reason for the high lumber prices is that lumber mills don't have enough workers. NAHB said the higher prices are a result of increased demand and restrictions in supply because of a lack of domestic production and lumber mill cutbacks. Hatton said 84 lumber usually honors a quote for 30 days, but because of the volatile prices, they can't honor a quote for that amount of time right now. We'll have people call in Monday and ask for a quote on a list and we'll tell them, hey, You've got seven days and it's going to go up. One sheet of particle board used to cost around $10. The price is now up to about $60. Amazing. You would have need to have put all your money into Bitcoin to be able to maintain your level of worth. Now, people often track net worth in dollars. So when the dollar is worth less, people's net worth stays the same. If you're worth $100,000 and then the dollar becomes worth half as much as it was a year ago, you're still net, your net worth is still $100,000. This means a lot of people aren't paying attention. A lot of regular people who aren't paying attention will see their bank account and they'll say, I'm all right. I got money in the bank. Guess what? Now you can't buy anything with it. Joe Biden's going to be spending $4 trillion. Do you think it's not going to get worse? It's bad enough from last year. Check this one out. From Insider, April 23rd, they say many household goods are getting more expensive as companies like Procter and Gamble and General Mills announce price hikes to combat shortages and rising shipping costs. During its third quarter earnings call this week, Procter and Gamble said it had started raising the prices of some of its goods, including baby care and feminine care products and adult diapers. The exact amount of the price increase will vary by brand and sub-brand in the range of mid to high single digit percentages and will go into effect in mid-September. I hope you're ready for how bad it's going to get in the next few months, man. September? You mean in five months? All right. I'm not a financial advisor, but maybe you should talk to one. I wouldn't consider that financial advice, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to talk to a financial advisor. Because when these big companies are telling us in five months, we're going to be raising the prices, they are giving you an advanced warning. Inflation is going to hit. The value of your money is going to go down. And that means other things are going to go up. Bitcoin, Ethereum, gold, silver, etc. I don't know exactly how these things will play out. Maybe they won't go up. I'm not a financial expert. Seems likely to me. They say some of Procter & Gamble's primary competitors, including Kimberly Clark, have announced similar price increases. In March, Kimberly Clark said it would increase the prices of top products like Scott Toilet Paper and Huggies Diapers. General Mills Chief Financial Officer Kofi Bruce said during the company's March earnings call that it was planning to increase its prices to offset rising commodity costs as its margins continued to fall. While the company did not specify what products would be affected, General Mills' lineup of brands includes Cheerios, Chex, Betty Crocker, and Pillsbury products. On Monday, Coca-Cola CEO James Quincy told CNBC that the company was planning to hike its prices for the first time in over three years. Quincy did not specify the products that would be affected. Quincy said Coca-Cola planned to implement the price hikes intelligently, thinking through the way we use package sizes and really optimize the price point for consumers. You know what that means? It means your drinks are about to get smaller. They're going to start selling. You ever see those small cans of soda they sell now? I mean, I'll be honest. Y'all shouldn't be drinking soda anyway. I like drinking water. Somebody made a joke because on the Tim Cast IRL podcast, I got a bottle of water next to me every night. And they're like, how long has that bottle of water been there? It's like, hey, hydro homies, maybe I just drink water and try to avoid soda. But we do have sodas. You're allowed to have soda. It's not just these goods. Like mentioning lumber going up is serious because it means new homes are going to be really expensive. And if the price of homes start going up, that's more inflation. And I'll tell you what I fear. Oligarchy. This is what we're heading to. And the Democrats are doing everything in their power to make sure it happens. They want the technocrats, the technology, these big tech firms to control everything. I have friends in Ukraine. And I remember looking at the price of rent in Ukraine because I was curious about how their economy worked. I went with a friend, a couple of friends when I was in Ukraine to a nice restaurant and the cost of food that we got, like it was like sushi and it was, it was like a nice, you know, cosmopolitan place it was moderately expensive for food by American standards. I think, you know, uh, swiping my card, they, 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 it's a, I think it's called hryvna is probably pronouncing it wrong. But that's the money in Ukraine. And so, or hryvna, however you pronounce it, hryvna. And so I swipe and it charges me in dollars comparable to a meal for three people in the U.S. And I'm like, how does someone in Ukraine afford this? Well, they don't. My friend said it's a fancy restaurant. They got me wondering. So I looked at prices of, of, of apartments and, and buildings. And what I found was really interesting. The price of property in Ukraine was comparable to prices of property in the U.S. in certain areas. And so I'm thinking to myself, how is somebody who makes only like a thousand bucks a month on average, if that 800 bucks, supposed to buy something like this? They don't. The oligarchs own it all. The wealthy elites own it all. And you have no way of, of br bridging that gap. What we're seeing now in the U.S. is scary because it's going to dramatically impact your ability to buy goods. It's going to make it so that you have to work twice as hard for half as much. And it means people like Jeff Bezos and the millionaires and the billionaires are going to be able to buy up everything and there is nothing you can do about it. It means that upward mobility in this country is being destroyed. Federal Reserve says it wants things to cost more for Americans. Here's why that could be good. Wait, 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 wait. Cost more? Wait, wait, what do you mean cost more? Yeah. They want you to have to spend more money. Why? Don't you remember what Michael Bloomberg said in the debate stage? Not the Democratic primary. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. It wasn't a debate stage. It was, like an, it was like an interview at like 92Y or whatever in New York. I think that's what it's called. And he said, effectively that he thought poor people were dumb, that they spend money on stupid things. So you got to tax the poor. Yeah, that was that was that was Bloomberg tax the poor, he said, because we know what's best for them. That's why they like it, that things are more expensive for you. They're tired of you buying deep dish pizzas. They're tired of you buying triple double bacon burgers. It's bad for you. Americans are overweight. They want to take away your right to choose. Now, I'm not saying they're doing it intentionally. I think because of COVID, they just happened upon this. And I think you don't need to look for conspiracies where exploitation is obvious. 
right? The conspiracy would imply they've been planning all of this to drive up prices, when in reality, they're just exploiting a crisis to gain power for themselves. If I were to tell you the millionaires and the billionaires were ripping you off, would you be like, I don't believe you, Tim? You know, I really love, I love, for some reason, people defending rich people. It's the weirdest thing. Now, I think people like Michael Bloomberg, I think he's a bad person. I certainly think he's earned his money. Good for him. But I don't like the idea that he can use that money to gain political influence and then take away our right to choose what's best for us, especially our rights to defend ourselves. Same is true for Tom Steyer and George Soros and, you know, other ultra wealthy individuals who use their money for political influence and then strip the rights away, uh, strip the rights of other people away. What I don't get is the people who defend the ultra rich. You know, I, I see rich people who advocate for taxing the rich, and I'm like, my only problem there is I don't think the government should have the money either, but I don't like the idea these ultra wealthy individuals who think they're smarter than everybody are going to tell us what to do and then buy elections by flooding the zone with, with, with cash for commercials and super PACs and lobbying, and then we're all worse off for it. I don't want Mike Bloomberg to have the ability to get large sodas banned. I think we need to build a culture that takes responsibility for their actions. ABC 7 says, on Wednesday, the Federal Reserve will meet for what could be the last time before the central bank decides how and when it will start rolling back policies it adopted to combat the effects of the pandemic. At a meeting last week, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said the government would like to see inflation stay above average for some time. For many Americans, that might sound like an ominous proposal, as it would mean things like groceries, restaurant bills, leisure activities would all cost more. But Robert Scott, a senior economist with the Economic Policy Institute, says higher inflation is actually a good thing. A tight labor market and a rapidly growing economy. If we can get there, it's going to sustain higher levels of wage increase. <laughs> yes, but if everything goes up because of hyperinflation, you'll need your wages to go up to, to stay even. So you might be paying more, 2 to 3% a year for more of your food and groceries and rent, but your wages might be rising at 3 or 4 or 5%. That's good news. If wages are rising more than prices, you're going to see a rising standard of living. You want to know who this benefits? Not you. I'll tell you what benefits. The people who have loans. Okay, so maybe that's you. Maybe you have a loan on a car. Maybe you took out $15,000 to get a new vehicle because you needed it. Well, this is where hyperinflation is going to be fun. You're going to see the cost of goods skyrocketing, so you're going to need a large raise. They're going to start paying you more and more and more and more money, but you still owe the bank 15 grand. So if your wage doubles and you can still only buy the same amount of milk, bread, and eggs, it effectively cuts the cost of your loan in half. So guess who that really benefits? The ultra wealthy who hold large liabilities and now because of hyperinflation owe substantially less. And I guess in the long run, really good for America as a country, because it means we ain't got to pay back the people holding debt across the, around the world. There are some benefits to it. It's probably one of the reasons why they want it to happen. But in the end, it means your savings will also be decimated. So I don't know what you should do. I'm not a financial advisor or an expert. I know that I'm trying to invest in myself as much as possible and into things. I bought a lot of guns. You know why? Well, guns and bullets they're going to keep going up in value. And there are other hard goods you can buy that will go up in value. Don't take my advice. Figure it out for yourself. Talk to a financial advisor. I guess the only problem is that the average person doesn't have the ability to do that. I mean, do you have enough money in the bank to go to a financial advisor and have them take you seriously? I think the average American probably doesn't. I think the average person watching my show probably has some to a, to a certain degree because, you know, not everyone's completely broke, though COVID did really, really hurt people. I don't think Biden cares. I, I really don't. I think they like the idea of hyperinflation. Biden begins selling his $4 trillion spending plans. I hope you're paying attention. The Democrat voters aren't. Maybe that's also uh, exploitation of the crisis. If a bunch of Democratic voters are now hurting and broke, their worldview will be that they're in trouble and the government needs UBI or socialism or communism. And then those of us who have paid attention and, you know, hedged our bets, we're still not going to want any of that stuff. But then you're going to have a very large voting block saying, look at all the homelessness and the cost of food. We got to do something. My favorite thing about all of this is how I have these lefties tell me I'm wrong when I explain basic inflation. And I'm like, I'm just reading the news, bro. 
It's 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 the Fed. It's 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 the it's mainstream media. They're telling us what's going to happen. But you weren't paying attention. You just sit back and say everybody should get more money. Okay. Well, I've been paying attention. I'm fortunate enough to have bought some crypto. And it's kind of scary, really. I didn't buy that much. I'm not one of these people who dumped all of their money into Bitcoin in November and now is sitting pretty. No, I, I, I take the hit same as everybody else. Sure, it looks good when you see the dollar sitting in the bank account. But what happens when people just keep needing more and more and more because inflation, it hurts everyone. No wonder Elon Musk, I think, I think Musk did this, transferred a bunch of Bitcoin, out from, uh, for, uh, a bunch of Tesla's balance sheet into Bitcoin. I don't know if Bitcoin's the right move, but people are certainly buying it up like crazy. When the money just sits in your bank, it loses value. You could work hard and break your back for 100 bucks. And if you don't spend it in a year, it'll be worth 50 bucks, the equivalent. It'll still say 100, but now you can buy half as many things. So you better pay attention to this stuff because I don't think they care about you or me and things can get scary. But I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.